Control M7 Enterprise Manager. This is the Enterprise Manager. It's the green icon on the desktop. You log in using the fully qualified host name and whatever your default port is, your username, which is case sensitive, and password. The server you log into should show up right here after you hit apply on the server there. Once you logged in, This is our test system, so you see the multiple data centers within it. This icon here shows you down to the individual job level out in the view screen. You can expand these, it's all tree expansion, like most any other Windows application would be. You can go down through the, the table, this is the application name. This is your group name, and then your individual job names. From here, the various colors distinguish different items. So the pink here is for confirm, so that means that the job's waiting on a confirmation, which you can right-click and click on to see all available options for any job. Green is a complete status. Red is a failed status, and in the application level it shows red when any job within the application fails. When you expand it, it'll show with any job within the group that fails will be red. Gray is a wait status, which means these jobs are waiting something, whether it be time or um, a resource of some kind to allow them to run. You will also see blue, which is normally a waiting node status, like uh, you see out here. This particular job here is waiting, and we can right-click on this job and do a Y and see why exactly it's waiting. This one is waiting for this status to change, so that's a requirement that they have on there, a resource of some kind. Uh, in this screen here you see all the same colors and you also see the indicators here like uh, a lock which means that the job is on hold. Let me find another job here and we will show a deleted job. An X showing up here would show that the job is deleted you can see that it does not change the status over here, but once we highlight the job, we can see that it is deleted there. As I said before, you can right-click on any job here and see the available statuses for the job. Uh, this one, if we want it to run, we would do a confirm. Say yes to allow it to confirm. It goes into a gray status and this one here is on hold so we would also right click on it and we would free that job before it ran. It's likely on hold because there's some kind of requirements that we need that's normally why they come in on confirm and you can right click on the job and go to properties to see those. Uh, a lot of people use the set tabs to set various uh, variables within the job. We'll go over that through the desktop edition of this, but in here you can see all the different options that are already set for these jobs. And we can free this job and this job will run. Yellow status means that it's in running. From this point you could kill the job if need be. And green means that the job is completed successfully. You can right click on any of the jobs and get their sys out. And it'll show the sys out of all the jobs for or of the job for every run that is had. So if this job is run multiple times, you would see additional. The higher number obviously would be the newest run. And when you open the sys out, you can actually see whatever it allows. If we want to rerun a job, we can right click and rerun. Say yes to the confirmation messages. You know, 
Let's see the job status change here to gray. This job is a cyclic job, so it has a uh, minimum time limit. So what you can do with that before each rerun, if you want to bypass any conditions or anything that are holding the job up, you can use this bypass function. You could tell it to skip the job if it was one in a series of a flow, or you could just tell it to pre-submit and run now, which means ignore any conditions that are on the job or any limitations included in any resources that may be set, and this job will rerun immediately. You can also see the log of the job, which brings up and shows every step, who's touched it, when, any resources that the job requires, the node that it's been submitted to, and every status change. Uh, the email results here, we can see that they failed. That doesn't stop the job from failing, that's just because there was no email address inputted. And the status of the job ending, you can see that it released the resources. It's changed to post-processed and then it was rerun by myself. It went through the same steps again, submitted to the same server as before. Shows you the run, stat, run count and the uh, status of its end. Again, it failed on the email because one wasn't in there. The job status and every time that it goes through. You can also see the statistics for previous runs. You can see its last run time. This job was only run once. Uh, we're configured to look back 10 days. So it was only run these two times in the last 10 days. Uh, it only shows successful runs in the statistics window. If it was mainframe, you could see the JCL and the script, and you could do edits on the fly. Uh, we also link all our jobs to documentation, which if we go to properties here, you can see the documentation where it's at. And to access it, you would right click and go documentation. If it wasn't auto focusing in on this job, you could right click on it and do a find and flow diagram. And then no matter where we are in this diagram, it would bring us directly to the job. And uh, I have mine configured to automatically focus on the job once on click. That's under the options menu. We can go over some of that. If we go to tools and then options here, you can configure the basic way that EM displays the information to you. You'll often notice on your first time coming into control M, there won't be any names associated with it because by default this is set to member name which is not an item that we use often only specific jobs remember it or require it so we often put it as job name mem name so if there is no job name it'll show the mem name we also I like to display the links behind the nodes if we uh, uncheck this then you'll often see on jobs that are interlinked with each other. Let me find one here that has a lot of conditions. The links will show up in front of the jobs and it just looks uh, really cluttered. They'll go over everything when you have many links going across. So I would suggest to always keep the links behind. Another great thing to do is to display the conditions if you're doing a lot of condition work. And then on any job that has out or in conditions, you will see those conditions on the jobs. Right here, so you can see if they're satisfied or what they're waiting for to be satisfied. And 
that is a bare basic overview. You can also force and order jobs in through EM if you have permissions to do so. Any permissions you don't have, these options will not be highlighted. But you would go Tools, Order Force. Select the data center and the table name. And then if you leave it blank here or as an asterisk here and you hit force, it would select all the jobs within the table and force them in. But if you just wanted a single job in, you could select it. You could even do advance and order it with a hold. You could tell it to order on a specific date. You could tell it to wait for that O date to run, or if you ordered it in or forced it in now for this date, it would run immediately if this box here is not checked. So what we'll go ahead and do is force in this dummy command tester job. Here you see the messages. You see that the job was ordered. It has no mem name. You see it's order ID. We can go to that job. This is the job here that was ordered. This one has a confirm, so we would have to do a confirm on it to allow it to run. That is your basic EM for 7.0.